ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, Natural Born Thriller, as I try to do it. <laughs> Welcome everyone to all Elite Wrestling Reviews, where it's giving you AEW Dark and Dynamite results where it pertains to New York Smash 2. So, without any further ado, here's the review of it. First, with AEW Dark, and then I'll give you AEW Dynamite New York Smash 2. Let's start off with results of AEW Dark, the show from January 12, 2021, in Jacksonville, Florida, in Daly's Place. And the yeah, commentators were Excalibur and Taz. You also had the return on commentary of Anthony Angogo um, for most of it. You also had Ricky Starks at one point on commentary. And Peter Avalon on there as well, which I didn't care for. You know, the whole the whole pretty Avalon gimmick and the whole thing that he's doing. Don't care. But most likely, Excalibur and Taz because you got to get the people what they want. Just saying. <clears throat> Opening match was Man of Steel, Mike Verna versus Absolute Ricky Starks being accompanied by Hook. Hook. Excuse me. <clears throat> I feel like I didn't say it right. <laughs> Hook, the, the son of Taz. And match itself was pretty decent between Ricky Starks and Mike Verna. And in the end, it was Ricky Starks getting the win. He gets one with a, a nice, picture perfect, absolute spear. Then we get to Fuego Del Sol teaming up with Rising. I don't care for Rising anymore. But they go up against Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus being accompanied by Marco, who's done his growth. Just saying. Uh, matches of it was whatever. I can't really. I mean, I would I would care for it more, but Rising, I just don't care for Rising anymore. Um. In the end, it was Jurassic Express winning, as they should. Um, and there you go. Nothing to say about that. We get Ty Conte um, with um, been a of momentum uh, on this match against someone by the name of Marty Daniels. Don't know much about her, but she looked to the right. You know, you know if if I get to see more of her, maybe um, I have a second opinion of her. But she got a good look and everything, and I thought she was alright, but no, no much from there to say really. But Ty Conte was being accompanied by Anna J of the Dark Order. Um, so Ty Conti basically uh, put work on her, and obviously Ty Conti got the win, obviously, because she did, she's getting built up. It's, she won with the uh, the TKO. The Ty KO, I should say. Um, yo, her finish move. <clears throat> then we get a 10-man tag team match that featured Adam Pierce. I mean, Adam Priest, excuse me, not Adam Pierce from WWE. <laughs> Adam Pierce. Adam Priest. Jesus, I, I did it again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Adam, Adam Pierce. <sighs> See, I did it again, folks. Okay, one last time. Adam Priest. There we go. Danny Limelight. Sean Dean. Very um, Morales, maybe? And Zach Clayton versus The Dark Order, which it features Colt Cabana, who goes boom, boom. Evil Uno. <laughs> Allen, five angels, Stu Grayson, and ten. Um, matches up. It was a fun match. Opposite the Dark Order wins. There you go. Anyway, it was a fun match though. I, I enjoyed the match for what, for what it was. Powerhouse Hobbs being covered by a hook, going up against Louis Valley. Match wasn't that long, even though you know with Hook being on getting involved in the match. I don't understand why uh, Will Hobbs needed help, um, you know, defeating on Louis Va Valley, but whatever. But yeah, basically that's what happened. Willie Hobbs won. Um, I mean, w w uh, <laughs> Willie Hobbs. <laughs> oh well, then again, Jim Ross called him Willie Hobbs before, so. Um, but it was Powerhouse Hobbs winning with the World's Strongest Slam. Basically, he's got the mo the, the finish move of Mark Henry. That's 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 basically what it was. <laughs> After the match, uh, Hobbs attacked him again, and that was it. Nothing to say about that. The Librarian, Leva Bates versus 
Straight from your mama's kitchen, red velvet. Match yourself, it was decent out of the two. Coming into the match, I knew who was going to win. And I'm like, well, so much for that uh, win streak that um, Libra Base was picking up because Red Velvet is once again, it's going to be getting built up pretty soon. And we'll get to that, one, um, what I mean by that once we get to Dynamite of the New Year's um, Smash of Part 2. But yeah, Red, Red Velvet won. Um, she won with the, on the, the flying Claymore kick. Um, you know, basically, that's basically what it was, a, a flying Claymore kick. Shades of Drew McIntyre. Um, she had her finish. She she had a, a different move, of it, um, different move of it. But I, I can't I can't remember what it's called. To, to be honest with you, but but yeah, that's picture her finishing move. You know, running on single legs drop kick. Um, but yeah, but Red Velvet Red, Red got the win. Then we get to um Casey Navarro. Remember I mentioned him on uh, retains to Genesis and retains to uh Impact Wrestling's reviews. Well. Casey Navarro, who's in the indie scene, he ends up being part of AW Dark here. He teamed up with some guy, I don't know who he is, by the name of El Australiento. Um, by the looks of him, he's got uh some kind of flamboyant attire. Don't know what to make of it. And he was dancing, and I'm like, well, I don't know how, how I feel about that, but um, but as far as this is wrestling. Didn't see much of it, but he looked impressive. But they go up against Alex Reynolds and John Silver of the Dark Order. Um, Reynolds is three, Silver is four, of the dark, which is the Dark Order. Um, I think oh, I got it right, right? Yeah, 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 actually, I do got it right. Silver is four, and Reynolds is five. Reynolds is three, I meant to say. But yeah, um, as far as the match was, it was. It was decent. Um, the Dark Order wins. There you go. As they should, by the way. Peter Avalon was on commentary for this match. What tends to Aaron Solo and Lee Johnson versus the Farsley Blondes, which is Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. Now, Peter Avalon was not focusing on Griff Garrison anymore. He was more focused on Lee Johnson now. What tends to him being part of the Nightmare family. And I'm like, oh god. And and on commentary, and like I I I tried to get into the match here, folks, but I couldn't get into the match because Peter Avalon is so, you know, starstruck of the looks of John you know, of, of Lee Johnson meant to say. And I'm like, oh my god, I, like I can't get into the um uh watching any matches um where it pertains to Peter Avalon being on commentary and, and being in love with them. Jesus Christ, man, that was it's, it's so freaking awkward. So the varsity blondes wins. After the match, Peter Avalon heads towards Lee Johnson, gives him a gift of his picture. Um, and I, 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 didn't, I just didn't care for it, folks. I just Peter Avalon. This is no, uh, this this is what they got from him. And I'm pretty sure it's probably, it's probably his idea because you know he in real life, in real life he probably is gay, but Jesus Christ. Moving on, then we get to the Pink Dream. Alex Gracia going up against the Queen Slayer <laughs> and the J of the Dark Order being copied by Ty Conte. So coming to match, I knew who was going to win here. Now, Alex Gracia, as always, is, was always impressive against, you know, uh, you know, retains these matches. But in the end, I knew who they was going to go uh, go with here. And obviously, Anna J wins. She won with the, uh, the Queen Slayer. So, um, decent match, though, for, for the time they got. In. It was it was decent for what it was. Not much to say about that, so. The NWA Women's World Champion, Serena Deeb. She's got momentum. She's got her momentum to build up more teams, um her match against Ty Conti, which we'll get to have when we get to the Dynamite um, New Year Smash results. But she goes against Tessa Price, and Tessa Price is being covered by someone. I don't know who he is. I don't think they even mentioned who he was on commentary. And, and but basically, she was annoyed about this guy. And I said, "Wait a So first they have. Her coming to AW Dark months ago, her being a heel, being a uh, you know, um, on you know, a mean girl in a way. Then for oh, a month later, I guess, turn her face for no reason out of the blue, and she shows some good personality of her being a face and everything. But I say myself, but I like her as a heel, and now 
we get to this point of a new year in 2021 and i don't know what she, i don't know what they're doing for her now i don't know if she's supposed to be a heel or a face now because um she's going up against the face of of serena deep and and another thing too folks they didn't even give her an entrance this is the weird thing about this too they edited her entrance out so no deep and made her interest and then you see touch the price in the ring and I see some women what's going on here what what, what the hell are they doing with, with her I, I I don't know what to make of this I really don't know I'm, I'm lost here I'm confused here don't know what they're doing with her but the match itself um it was all right for what it was um you know it would have been better if if they would have know what the fuck they're doing with Tasha Price you know Tesha Price, I should say it. Not, I don't want anyone to be confused and say I'm, I'm saying Tesh, Tessa. You know, where it pertains to Tessa Brancher. Uh, but no, but it's Tesha Price. But in the end, it was Serenity winning with the the neutralizer. Um, with you know, with her hands um getting you know being locked you know being um you know in a straight jacket type of way. So, um, unless I was thinking about the other match, but I think she does. I think she did here too. So I could be wrong. But in the end, Trina Deep did win, so. Next we get to Baron Black and Nick um, Comoroto. Comorado. Again, I'm trying I'm trying to figure out that's uh, how he's his last name. You know, this the you know the, the same big guy you know, with the cr- the crazy bushy wild hair, the bu- the uh, the bushy uh beard. You know. You know that big guy that I talked about before that he's um basically um I, he's been on dark on um, plenty of times, um but they but they go up against Bear Country which is Bear Boulder and Bear Bronson, and I'm thinking to myself in this match um at first first of all the match itself decent, d- decent tag team match, I'm thinking to myself here who's going to get the win here, I like they, they got to go with Bear you know they got to go with Bear Country because Bear Country has been booked strongly on on AEW Dark here which is the um, them being tag team matches, and that's what happened they did win. Um, it was like an assistive splash, uh, off the shoulder. Uh, basically Bronson off the shoulders of, of a uh, boulder, obviously. So that's basically what it was. So, but yeah, bad country got the win, uh, and I'm good, I'm glad they got the win. So, good, good for them. <laughs> then we get to the main event, which this was very questionable because why is this, why is this the main event? Basically, it's top flight. Um. Darius Martin and Dante Martin. Now the mind top five playing in the main event, but they go up against Pro- you know, Chaos Project, which is Dr. Luther and Serpentico. And the reason why I say that is because when it comes to the tag team of you know Chaos Project, they're not really the best tag team. They don't really gel well as a tag team, and that's by design. But I say to myself, why is this the main event? Why couldn't it be someone else to face the top five uh, in the main event here? So. The top, top fight wins match itself wasn't that but was not anything special this was the worst main fight i've ever seen on dark i had to say I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that but and and, and this is and is not not knock on top flight but this was a a bad poor choice for top flight to go up against someone in the main event uh for dark and chaos project was not a good choice at all but there you go folks that was your aew dark results there were 12 matches uh, that was a tall amount my overall strength for the show for aw dark from January 12, 2021. I'm going to go with a 6 out of 10. I will go for a 7 and a half out of 10. That main event, it just didn't do it for me. So, it's, it's tough for me to say, but it's whatever. And that will um, conclude the AW Talk results for this All Elite Wrestling Reviews. And now let's get to your AEW Dynamite results, which pertains to AEW New Year Smash. Part two that took place on uh, January thirteenth, twenty twenty one. This show was pre recorded on January seventh, twenty twenty one, in Jacksonville, Florida, in Day's place, with the same you know attendance. I'm assuming of of seven hundred and seventy thousand in attendance. Um, I'm assuming. Um, I could be wrong, but who knows? But yeah, your commentators were good old Gerard Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone. And Excalibur. Now there was no Chris Choco on commentary here, which I thought uh, he was going to be on commentary for this for this event as well. Um, but then I didn't, but then I had to remind myself that he was also going, was going to be in the segment, uh, with, you know, with the Inner Circle, which we'll get to when we get to it. 
so some pretty much uh so much for that so um but yeah um but someone did end up being commentary um but we'll get to him later so but yeah um um I'm trying to remember how the show opened up I, um I, 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 I'm, trying to remember, I'm trying to remember how, how it opened up <laughs> sorry about that folks oh, yeah, okay, I can't remember now um the show view packages of the drama between the Death Triangle and A. Kingston's crew so it will culminate to where it tends to this match we're going to see right now which is the Bastard Pack being accompanied by the Lucha Bros of Pentec- the, and <clears throat> of Pentec- El Zero Middle and Ray Phoenix, as as the, as Pack goes up against the Mad King, Lee Kingston being accompanied by the Butcher, and the Blade, and the Bunny known as Ali. Uh, a Kingston goes a promo on Pack saying that he's going to bust him up, and after Pack goes back home, he, he he'll never come back ever again. And that was also that's that's when Pack came out, and then he immediately goes after him with a, a shotgun drop kick. And we're off to the rest of there. Akins uh, was getting his ass kicked uh, for, for most of the match until he got the better of packing the match. We got some outside uh, involvements of of the butcher, the blade, or uh, the bunny, uh, even with, with, with the Lucha Bros and all that. But in the end, it was Pack getting the win after delivering the Black Arrow. <laughs> and after he delivered the Black Arrow and got the win, he then locked on the, the neutralizer. I mean the neutralizer. I meant to say the brutalizer. But then the Butcher and the Blade comes in the ring. All of a sudden, we get the Lucha Bros get in there to, um, you know, to, uh, basically it was like a stalemate. The Butcher and the Blade having a stalemate here and everything. All of a sudden, the Murderhawk Monster, Lance Archer comes out with Jake the Snake Roberts, chase away, you know, Akinson's crew. And they package in the face of uh, Lance Archer, and, and Lance Archer starts uh, telling him, you know, you know we got we got to uh, be on the same page and everything, and blah, blah, blah. And that was, and that was basically it. And, and then that was it. Now it's going to lead. Now this is probably been up. Uh, something between Pack versus Lance Archer, which I'm, I'm fine with, by the way. I love to see. I love to see that match. This will be the first time we ever see Pack versus Lance Archer. So this will be something to, to, be, to be built up, maybe for you know, uh, Beach Break, which is going to be on February third. <laughs> well, we'll see. All right, then we get. Oh, by the way, oh, by the way uh, I should mention too, by the way, Pack versus Eddie Kingston. It was a nine minute and thirty one minutes match. Then we get to the next match. We get the best man, Miro, being accompanied by the super bad Kip Sabian and the super bad girl, Penelope Ford. As Miro takes on the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor, with Freshly Squeeze, the baddest man on the planet, Orange Cassidy. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, this match, basically, if... Chuck Taylor uh, loses to Miro, then M- Miro will have Chuck Taylor as his his butler, his assistant, until we get to the the wedding, which hopefully uh they'll, they'll pull out you know a miracle to be the one one of the absolute best weddings they could ever do for pro wrestling. But I I digress. <laughs> um, but the match lasted three minutes and thirty two seconds. Now you think to yourself, wow, it was that long. Well, yeah, it was because for one thing, um, it's Miro, you know, of of his physique against Chuck Taylor, and you see his physique, eh, doesn't match up against Miro. But here's the thing, Miro has back turned during the match, and this was Chuck Taylor's uh, you know, opportunity to capitalize on it, and he attacks him from behind, and basically getting the upper hand on Miro. Miro was trying to um, get some um offense onto Chuck Taylor, but Chuck Taylor kept coming off and everything, sending him to the to the ring post at one point, send him into the guardrail, send him into the some some kind of uh, stage equipment, whatever thing that's and that's near the stage and all that. And I'm like, wow, like, like Miro's not getting any any offense at all. I was expecting a, a squash match here where Miro just beats him, you know, plain and simple. Well, you know, Roger Taylor getting any um momentum or you know any offense in the match at all. Um, in the end, Miro did get the win, and you obviously you have some involvement of Kip Sabian and Orange Cassidy, um. But then, yeah, it did let to Miro at the end of the day, dominating Chuck, Chuck Taylor, puts him into the game over, the submission move, which it used to be called, um, what was it called before in WWE? Oh, yeah, the accolade. Um, it used to be called the accolade, 
So now, um, he basically the camel clutch, but he calls it the game over. <laughs> um, in my opinion, he should call it the, the crushinator. <laughs> but I, dig I digress. <laughs> uh, but anyways, but that was it. Yeah. So yeah, Mirror wins the match here, which means, you know, Orange Cassidy has no choice but to uh have, um, Chuck Taylor, to go to Miro because Miro. Now he's got his own butler, routines to um, Chuck Tiller, and this could be funny by the way, building up um, uh, everything that they're gonna do for these segments on on Dynamite, where Chuck Tiller, um, you know, wearing uh, his but butler uniform, whatever, serving for Miro, and Kip Sabian, and Pelby Ford, so yeah, <laughs> that should be entertaining. We'll see. Hopefully, it'll be more entertaining than the winning, but I di again, I digress. Matt Hardy, or should I say? Big Money Matt with Private Party backstage. That show Gonzalez was interviewing them. Um, we basically interviewing Private Party, you know, Private Party, excuse me, which led to Matt Hardy and you know, get involved, you know, in the you know, interrupting Big Money Matt, I should say. And at this point, Private Party, uh, they they couldn't hold it anymore. Mark Quinn basically was complaining about Matt Hardy's, you know, dirt. 30% of the whole contract thing and all that and lying to them about the third party deal was not was not going to uh, was not going to affect them and Matt Hardy told them well you guys didn't find yeah they didn't, yeah, didn't read the fine print and by the way I did I think this was this was mentioned on dark by the way which I did forget to mention but I, I'm, I'm I'm assuming this was mentioned on dark too as well where private party um didn't uh, oh no I'm sorry not, not dark it was um actually on uh BTE um you know being the elite with Matt Hardy, I uh, mentioned, you know, something about, you know, they didn't read the fire, the fine print on the contract. And here we go, and here we go again with the whole thing with the, uh, not reading the fine print on the contract. Uh, where it's their fault they didn't, they didn't listen. And Mark Quinn, you know, says, you know, you know you're a money uh, grabbing uh, crane or whatever, something like that. And Matt Hardy gets pissed off and he tells him, yo, you, you know what, guys, shut, shut up. You know, just, it's over. Get out of here. Please leave. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, Matt Hardy, you know, I'm I liking that he's um having um an opportunity to um to really um play out his big money Matt um thing because it didn't last that long. Where you know back in 2016 when he was in teenage wrestling because they, they you know because they went to a different direction where potential him being broken, you know. But yeah, I'm happy they're doing this with Matt Hardy, and and this is Matt Hardy's decision. This is Matt Hardy's own creative control here of you know, of doing all this. So um, but we'll see where what that leads to though. Obviously, it's going to lead to Matt Hardy being a heel and private party eventually break, breaking all, all away from Matt Hardy. So, all right, now it's time for the inner circle. They come down to the ring and they want to reveal their New Year's resolution. Jake Hager basically says, you know, his resolution is championships. Yeah, <laughs> the way he did it was so funny. Like, okay, that was out, that was out of the ordinary. And Jeff says, you know, his resolution is to continue. Uh, uh, you know, s strengthening the the bonds of the inner circle, and it says, and no fat guys need it because they need to go. I don't know where that came from, but okay. Um, Ortiz wa uh, wants to um wants to um perfect one of his grandma's recipe, which is to you know to food, obviously. Chris Jericho uh, said that this year that he and MJF will be going to be the tag teams and they want to become tag team champions. And then Santana gets involved and like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Jericho, basically, this is Santana saying this is Jericho. Jericho, when you have picked me and Ortiz to be in the inner circle, that we, we are the tag teams of the inner circle. And then Sammy Guevara uh, in the, in the interrupts too. He's like, and, and he's, and he's like, and Jericho, we were a tag team as well too. And, and then you were a tag team with, with Jake Hager and then you want to be a tag team with MJF. And he's like, I'm sorry to say this to you, Jericho, but you're a little tag team slut. <laughs> and then, um, and just try to get, uh, you know, calm things down and everything. And then Kavaro is, is telling, um, you know, MJF, hey, shut your mouth and everything. And then Hager's like, hey, hey, no, he's cool, man. And then, um, I think, uh, Kavaro made sense about, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, what, what, I mean, what's next? You want to team up with, uh, you know, basically saying this is Jericho. What's next? You want to team up with this new dog, too? Because you're a, a tag team slut. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. And Joko claims that you know everyone needs to calm down. And basically, Joko says, well, "You know, 
Warlow and Hager, they, they, they blew the seams off of their match. So how, how about we do the same? So basically, he suggested on the next Dynamite show that it's going to be a three-way tag team match that's going to feature Saturn and Ortiz versus uh, MGF and Chris Jericho versus Guevara Hager. And basically, Jericho uh, was making fun of the whole thing of uh, Sammy Hager. And then Sammy, Sammy was saying to Jericho, like, I don't, I don't get the joke. And Jericho was like, uh, never mind. And I agree with um, Sammy Guevara. I don't get the joke either. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's, what's the joke reference of this whole Sammy Hager is. It's, I don't know. But yeah, that was basically it, folks. That was the end of that segment. And obviously, it was, it was been up the dissension of the of the inner circle, which that's pretty that's probably um playing into the to the um hands of of you know of MJF obviously will it lead to something. Maybe, maybe. who knows? Um, to be honest with you, I really don't know how, how where they're going with this at all. But we'll, I guess we're we're gonna, we're gonna have to find out, you know. <laughs> but we'll see. The Dark Order. They've been interviewed by Alex Marvez, and basically say you know basically they didn't um hide away from. Um, after everything happened, um, you know, after the young, young time and passing of Brody Lee, you know, the young, young expecting passing of Brody Lee, I should say. Um, because the Dark Order, you know, uh, we're out, we're out Brody Lee now, what are you guys going to do now? And, and they decided to stay together, saying that they do everything uh, in honor of Brody Lee and they will um, have Alan Page team up with, you know, Alex, uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver. And I can't remember who else uh, the, the Dark Order is going to be in it too. I, I think it's um it, they're advertising a full, a four man tag match. I think it was or or, or maybe six man. I can't. I, I don't recall. But anyways, um. But yeah. But you but you also have um, the Hangman or should I say, um because he was drinking, the drunk man and the page was there, and basically you know, um, Reynolds and Silver they were asking uh you know, Page, are are you are you concerned to join the Dark Order now? And he's like, you know what? Uh, I'll give you guys to next week. Um, I'll give you my answers from there. And then and all I can say is from there, folks, is that if the hangman of the page accepts to be in the dark order, I got a new name for him uh, when that happens. And if it happens, this is his new name. From the hangman and the page, from the drunk man and the page, to the dark man and the page. Yeah. Dark man shit. Yeah, that that sounded corny, but um, I'll still stick. I'm sticking with that though. Dark man page. But we'll see. Uh, and, uh, and that was it. That was basically what they, um, they, they've been up for, uh, for next week's show. Um, and I think it has something to do with um, you know, with Bradley Junior's birthday uh, um, wish match like that. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Cause uh, cause um, Bradley Junior, yo minus one, he's gonna be turning nine. So it's. It, that's that's gonna be something that could be um advertising and um building up for for next week's start of my show. So there you go. We get a real package highlighting the um the whole thing with Team Taz beef with Darby Allen, which was uh, well done. It all goes back to where Darby Allen uh kept uh you know, rejecting Taz's offer and everything, which led to the whole thing with Brian Case debuting and then the whole thing with Ricky Starks, and and then the rest of his history with the whole thing with and the whole thing with Will Hobbs and all that. So it was good. It was, and it's called leads to the uh, to the main event, which we'll get to when we get to it. We get to the elite, you know, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, Matt and Jackson, with Don Callis. They're getting ready to go to the ring to make their interest and everything. You know, the elite um are doing doing things. You know, you know, the elite are back together and everything, whatever, and all that. Also, Don Callis says, "Hold on, hold on a second. We're not going out there together. Kenny Omega's going to do his entrance, and you guys could do your own entrance." You know, you, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 we, we can still do the whole this elite thing and all that, whatever. But uh, it's gonna be, you know, Kenny Omega having his, his Lambert entrance, and then you got you guys have your Lambert entrance. You know, everybody wins. So all of a sudden we get Kenny Omega doing his Lambert entrance. You know, with the whole thing of of the whole dialogue uh, introduction by Justin Ro- Justin Roberts and the the broom uh, ladies. You know, the clean the cleaner girls, I should say. Um, and then Kenny Omega, yo. I hear the battle cry, and then yo, know, all of a sudden yo, know, Don Cass gets on the microphone and says yo, know, uh, the band is back together, and then he introduces um his best friends, that are introduced as the world tag champions, um the elite's best friends and all that, 
Tucker Brothers. I'm like, wow, what a swerve that was. Wow. So Young Bucks uh, was shown backstage with a look on her face. Even Tony Khan was on was uh, was was look was on camera too um, with a look on his face as well. And they were like, wow. They were, you know they they were they were in law. But at the end of the day, business is business. But best friends are forever. So. So yeah, it was basically. It was not the elite that we thought it was going to be. It was actually Bullet Club, Kenny Omega, Doc Gallows, and Machine Gun Carl Anderson, and they go up against the Varsity Blondes, which is Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. And teamed up with them was Danny Limelight. Match happens, decent match, and Danny, you know Danny, you know Danny Limelight. Meant to say, Danny Limelight, he was very impressive in this match. I mean, he's always been. He, of all I've seen him, he's always been impressive. But uh, this one really showcased how impressive he was, and a lot of people were praising him too. Uh, of what I heard, so yeah, Damon Lionel, like man, yeah, if they were to sign him, they need to sign him now because I think he's good. A Puerto Rican wrestler from New York City. Um, I don't know if he, if he's from New York City, maybe from Brooklyn, maybe from Bronx. I don't know who knows where, where, where what type of uh, 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 place he is. He lives in New York, um, but you know, he's but um, he's he's got a lot, man. He's he's got he's mm, he's good. He's pr- he's pretty good, so we'll see we'll see happen with that one though. Um, but uh, ever ever uh, of our heard people were praising Danny Limelight. But yeah, match itself was decent. Obviously, the winners were, you know, the um was um the you know, the, the Bullet Club, which it was the Good Brothers going for the Magic Killer onto, I think it was Griff Garrison. Either that or it was Damian Lim- Yeah, actually, it was Danny Limelight. Yeah, for someone that was um that was being praised on AW Dynamite. Of, of his performance in Dane Limelight, he ends up losing. Wow. But after the match, by the way, um, the six man tag team match, I should say, um, it lasted nine minutes and 21 seconds, I should say. And then we get John Moxley, who is unscripted, unstable, and all violence. He comes down, he goes, confronts the, you know, King Omega, beats him up. And piece of all the good bros too, but you know, obviously the numbers game was, was the best was getting the best of of it. L- the Lucha Bros comes out by the way. Ray Phoenix and Penta El Zero comes out. You know, to help out uh, John Moxley. Also we get the Young Bucks coming out to uh, to uh, to make to make peace and everything. Um but also Lucha Bros weren't ha- were not having any of it and they attacked the and they attack, you know, the Young Bucks. And the and the fight continues on. And we get, you know, Couple of securities, couple of uh, referees, I think a couple of agents, whatever, and and we have a couple of AW dark wrestlers in there as well. And I said, women, a few of the AW dark wrestlers um, were there, um, pushing um, and um, um, you know, pulling away on um, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows and uh, you know, to, to not um, you know, to stop the fight and everything. Meanwhile, they were the same guys that were getting their ass kicked last week by the, by the Good Brothers, especially El Frigo del Cell. I, that that one I didn't I didn't get at all. Um, bad 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 poking right there. And that was it. That was over. No much, much to say about that. Um, let's see what was next after that. Oh yeah, well and while it was also going on, can't make one help, but Don Cal's like, no, we have to retreat. You're you're the champion, and all that. You need to you need to recover. You need to recuperate. You need to, you need to rest. You know, we're, we're leaving. So yeah, there you go. And now, folks, the moment we all been waiting for. The waiting room. Reba. Rebel, whichever you want to say. Introduces your doctor. I mean, your dentist and mine, whoever. She ain't my dentist. By what she was, by the way. Um, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. So, so we get Britt Baker coming out. She, um, first of all, saying, you know, her, you know, the monologue of this whole thing of the waiting room, being on Dynamite for the first time. And she's telling everyone to look under the, the chairs and everything, right? It reminds me of the first episode when, when they did this um, back on Dark. And then, you know, everyone's looking under the chairs and everything. I, I, I think I was what I was meant to say under the chairs, not not table. I, I think I said table. But if I did, I apologize. But um, but under the chairs, and 
and Britt Baker says psych just like um, from the first episode on dark like oh my god this <laughs> um and then rebel her laugh um it reminds me now that i think about it because i watched you know some also sounds of a review on dynamite it reminds me of the nanny's laugh you know the whole <laughs> you know that whole thing and also it kind of reminds me of you know uh what's her name again from family guy the wife of the wife of Peter Griffin, uh, Lois Griff, Griffin. I think that I think that was her name, Lois. I got forgot. You know, it's been it's been a while since I watched Family Guy. Um, and Family Guy has changed a lot too, so that's why I don't, I don't watch it anymore. But anyways, that's uh, that's not a hero there though. Um, but but most likely the, uh, the nanny's laugh. You know, if anyone's seen the on the show, the nanny, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that's what Re- Rebel was doing. That was the laugh. That, that's the laugh I was talking about. For those who don't, who, who doesn't catch on AEW Dark or just to the Wayne Rooms uh, shows they do on there, you, you got a taste of it on Dark. I mean, I mean, yeah, I got a taste of it on Dynamite, I meant to say. And yeah, it was that laugh I was talking about. <laughs> like almost like an Emma Thumb laugh too, by the way. When you think about it. Um, so let me get um the get um the guest host. I mean, like, I mean, the, I mean the special guest. I meant to say special guest, Cody Rose. So Cody Rose brings brings him out, and she she says that uh, don't don't know how in the world he landed uh, the TV show on TNT. Uh, and I said myself TNT don't you, don't you mean TBS? Because that's where the show is. You know the the Go Big Show is on TBS, and she says but they're but they but but they're happy for him and everything. Um, and then she mentioned she mentioned something about um you know. Uh, a, a neck tattoo, something like that. I can't remember how, how it was said, but I don't really remember what Cody Rose really saying much on the show, by the way, to be honest with you. I think it was going to, but then also he gets caught up by Britt Baker saying, Oh, wait a minute, uh, you know, we got a special guest, we got a guest here, um, you know, a surprise guest, I should say. And it was Jade Cargill. So Jade Cargill comes out, and basically, Oh yeah, okay. I remember Brick Breaker said now before we get to Jake Cargill. Uh, Brick Breaker asks who who Cargill's guy is, Shaq or Sting, and says that uh, he he that he should uh, make a good choice. Unlike um <laughs> that thing on his ta- on his neck. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, she ain't wrong though. But I got over it though. I don't know if anyone's got over it either, but who knows. Many people still talking about it to this day. Um, Brit Baker's basically um, was making all those, those snarty remarks, uh, snarty comments, remarks, and all that. And then eventually, we get you know Jay Car, you know Jay Cargill coming out, you know because Brit Baker introduced her, and she says Jay Cargill, no one gives a damn that Brandy is pregnant, but uh, says that Cody did uh, did hear. I mean, did 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 her um big favor, did her a huge favor of getting pregnant because Jay Cargill will whoop her ass, and if she does come back, she's gonna whoop that ass and everything. And then she says something about, uh, her and Shaquille Neal are done waiting, and we want to know, who's um you know, is Jay Cargill's opponent. <laughs> so and then and then and, and the problem you know in in all this, Jay Cargill, I think she may have slapped Cody Rose. I I could be wrong. I think she slapped Cody Rose. And then all of a sudden we get the appearance of Red Velvet. She she ends up showing up and she goes up she goes up to slap Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill slaps her back and all that, and then they start fighting. And then we get a pull apart. And from there, Cody Rose is gone. Like wait a minute, wait a minute. What was the point of Cody Rose even being there? I, I didn't get that at all. It, 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 it made no sense. Why, why was Cody Rose even there in the first place? I don't know because he he didn't say anything. He just stood there with the, with the green you know blaze jacket and everything. I'm like, well, I I didn't get the point of him being on the show if he didn't say anything and doing didn't even do anything. Um. So yeah, I I, I didn't get that at all. But um, while all this was going on, all of a sudden we see the Tyrantron. The video shows that. You know, with holding with Britt Baker attacking Donna Rosa from you know from weeks ago, and and also Britt Baker's liking it and everything. Also, Donna Rosa shows up on a Tabatron, and she basically uh you know, 
letting her um uh, Rebecca know this isn't over yet. And it's just she show that just a reminder of what you did to her and everything. You know, um basically humiliate her and all that. And she talked to Tony Khan about, you know, it's gonna be a match between those two at um Beach Break, which is gonna be on February third. So it's gonna be Donna Rosa versus Britt Baker. And we're finally to see what Britt Baker is made of. Because she's has been improved since she's been returning. But she's not sure going up against one of the best wrestlers in the world in Donna Rosa. And we'll see how Britt Baker um can manage to go up against one of the best wrestlers in the world in Donna Rosa. Because if she fails uh, of, of that, oh, expect to get out the trash for her. So but I'm Barbara Brick was obviously um wasn't was out uh, irate and all that. She didn't want that to happen and all that, blah blah And then she's like, you know, and that's the end of the show. And there you go. Basically, you know, the Wayne Room show. That's basically it was, it was the end of that. So there you go, folks. Match is official. And the reason why I done the Rosa wasn't there personally is because of what I heard, she may have came in contact with someone who had COVID nineteen. So this is bad when you when you're in the middle of a pandemic. And and on top of that too. That it's not just it's not just with someone from AEW as well, yo. You know, Thunder Rosa is not really AEW, but yo, you know what I mean. Um, but but when you hear about Drew, Drew you know, Drew McIntyre also getting COVID nineteen as well, he actually called COVID nineteen. Hopefully, he, he feels he gets better and gets well. Um, because you know he's our WWE champion right now, and all we could do is wish for the best for um uh, the person Drew Galloway. So, my best wish goes out to Drew Galloway. Um. So there you go. But yeah, um, that's part of why Don Rose wasn't there. So if she doesn't be there next week, it's part, that's part of the reason why. Because you know she's on keeping self quarantine until she feel, until she um you know you know finds uh finds out about this whole thing that she's um that she's good to go. So now we get to the next match, a tag team match. It was the Jurassic Express, uh, Jungle Boy and. Marco who's on his growth. <laughs> uh, first is FTR, Cass Wheeler, and Dax Hollywood being accompanied by Tully Blanchard. Max lasted 12 minutes and uh, 16 seconds. Um, at this match was, um, the match itself, um, yeah, I didn't really care for Marco Stunt to be in the match that much, really, because this this this, this basically what it was, too. It was all Marco Stunt's um, building up uh, against the bullies, I, I guess you could say, whatever. The important thing about this match, um, besides the match, how it was decent, it was decent. But um, the important thing about this whole thing was that Jungle Boy theme song, Jungle Boy's theme song of Tarzan Boy, and, and Bobby does know does know the song. Uh, it goes like this. You know, Tarzan Boy by Baltimore. So yeah, that's Jungle Boy's theme song, and and I've heard before too. By the way, this has been his theme song since the um his day in the Indies. So the fact that um that Tony Khan bought the rights for Jungle Boy, I mean on dress, I mean. Uh, and I was just about to say Jurassic Boy, <laughs> uh, Tarzan Boy. He bought the rights for uh, your Tarzan Boy, for Jungle Boy to come out with. I guarantee you, and I'm pretty sure everyone uh, could be, could, you know, can agree, can agree to me with as well. This one, even um, Jason Solomon from Solomon Sounds Off, he he called this um, out um, since um, he heard he heard uh, about this. When we get the full crowds back into uh, to these events for AW. Um, with, with, with Jungle Boy's um theme song of Tarzan Boy by Baltimore, he's going to be over like a motherfucker. I mean, he's he's over, he's over already, but he's going to be more over as a big up uh, as a bigger star because of that theme song. Because that's a classic theme song, a one hit, a one hit, one of those theme song that people still enjoy listening to. I love listening to it all the time. So, but that's besides the uh. But that that'll be that we'll worry about, we'll about that um later on down the line when everything uh is back to normal, because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And 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 by the way, folks, uh, um, for this person uh, watching or listening to this uh, review, he knows what I'm talking about when I'm, when I'm saying that in, in that tone. Because we are still in the pandemic. Anyways, 
the match itself. Marco Stunt, besides the two the two um, kicks that he missed, he was impressive. He was impressive. I'll I'll give him that. I mean, as far as you know, what they told him when he first came into into the business, uh, where it tends to um you know wrestling itself. I still haven't seen any good wrestling out of Marco Stunt, but of what he can do with his acrobatics uh, moves and all that. To a T, he he does he does it pretty well. So I'll give him, I'll give him that, and he really held his own against uh, FTR. In the end, FTR wins. They won with the uh, the big rig. Um, so the big rig uh, basically was um was for dedication to Brody Lee because Brody Lee was known as Big Rig, um, and I, I didn't I didn't understand that at first because you know I didn't I didn't watch his stuff under the Indies. Yeah, there's no way I couldn't watch it, the stuff his, of, of the indies, but and I, and I understand why how Big Breaker, or why Big Breaker uh, did what she did on that Pro Elite show when she said everything is a, a big rig, the, you know the whole rig rig thing. I thought she was um mocking Donald Trump for that, but no, it was about you know Pro Elite because Pro Elite was big rig. Um, and by the way, I'll, I need to mention two about folks before I move on. Um, Chris Jericho on that um tribute show, he said something too about um you know about Pro Elite. About how, you know, he invited Brody Lee uh, to his house, and I think uh, it was during that time where he's on to go do that talk is Jericho show, um, where he's got you know Jericho Scott dog, who's not um fond with strangers, but when Brody Lee um came into the house, um Jericho's dog, who who doesn't like strangers at all, meeting Brody Lee for the first time, licking his hand, and all that, and like wow, it just shows you, um, you know um at that t- that story that Chris Jericho told, that Brody Lee. It is a, a very uh, unique, decent human being, and and even his dog um, realized that. Uh, uh, Brody Lee, and it's a damn and it's a damn shame that he's gone. A real damn shame. Uh, one of the nicest guys that that um you know behind the, all the character of Brody Lee, you know Johnny Huber. Uh, it's just uh, uh it's just sad to, uh, to hear that too, and, I, and that's one thing that I forgot, I forgot to mention too. So I just want to bring that up. Cause I, I feel like uh, I'll be doing a, a disservice if I didn't bring that up for a chance to the late great John John Huber, rest rest in peace, man, rest in power. Um, but anyways, um, but yeah, FTR's um, you know, the big rig, it you know it must it must be called the the uh, Midnight Express, I mean the the Good Night Express, I meant to say, you know, the, basically the former Shatter Machine, and, um, and then it was and now it's, it's formerly called the uh, the Good Night Express because now. Um, for for Brody Lee, it's called, it's, it's not called the Big Rig, so that was good, and they got the win, um, as they should, as they should. Then we get to the NWA Women's World Championship. It lasted uh nine minutes and twenty eight seconds. It was uh Serena Deeb defending her title against Ty Conte being accompanied by Anna J of the Dark Order. And may first um, notice this is the first time that Ty Conti has ever got a title shot for a women's championship title in pro wrestling. Fuck you, WWE. Because WWE didn't give her the opportunity, never even get a chance to even try to uh, to, uh, to fight to, for a championship title on NXT for the NXT Women's Championship title. Fuck you, WWE. Anyways, match itself, it was decent. Uh, obviously, you know Ty Conti. Um, you know she's 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 very good. She's improved, but she's she's got a long way to go, especially where it tends to her first ever championship title match she's, she's ever been. So, um, I don't remember Dark was out there too, by the way, or because I remember about Dark Dark Order came out there too as well. But you know, basically, it tends to John Silver and Alex Reynolds. But I don't know. I don't I don't remember. But anyways, um, but either way, um, Ty Conti she she uh, she she was very impressive. Um, she would, it was a lot of things that um that you know, um that looked like it was a uh, look look a little awkward in the ring. Uh, I think one of them was by design too because you know basically showing uh, how Serena Deeb already uh, took her to the limit to the limit. Uh, and, and, and with Serena Deeb being a, a great a great wrestler herself, you know she she uh basically carried uh Ty, Ty Conti, uh in this match. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, good moves in the match here. Uh, in the end, it was, um Serena Deeb winning still. The NWA Women's World Champion and Ty Conti, she did great. I thought she did a splendid job. Um, you know, hopefully she'll get more better of it. Uh, you know, she's still young. She's still got a lot, a long way to go, 
and this won't be her this won't be her last title shot in, in pro wrestling. So there you go. Uh but yeah, but Anna J was was proud of her too though. You know, despite uh you know, coming up short, she was very proud of her uh, that she got that far. Then we get to the main event for the AEW TNT Championship. That's a 13 minutes and 47 seconds. The unique Enigma, the TNT Champion, Darby Allen versus the FTW World Champion, the Machine, Brian Cage, being accompanied by Absolute Ricky Starks and Taz's son, Hook, while Taz was on commentary. And meanwhile, because they want to, they, because, um, Officials didn't want you know too many uh, team tests out there. Powerhouse Hobbs was banned from ringside. So the match happened between Darby Allen and Brian Cage. This was an all-out war. This match was incredible. Um, Darby Allen um, gave all he had to Brian Cage, and Brian Cage destroyed Darby Allen in this match. Power him out. I mean, not power him. Grew pressing him out of the ring through a table. A table, you know, from the um timekeeper's area. I'm like, holy shit! And the table and the chair may have hit hit Darby Allen on the back of the head. And then, um, uh, if if I recall, suplexes him on the stage, rubber, or I think may have power bomb on the stage. And Darby Allen is like, you know, and, and, and on top of that, Darby Allen was busted open, and Darby Allen was basically um, you know, was was flipping, you know, Brankis off with his middle finger, you know, to give him the bird, and he did to him twice by the way. And Brian Cage, uh, you know, set up st- uh, the stairs for you know to, t- to take out Darby Allen. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'll I'll take him. I'll take him. What he's going to do with the steps, steel steps and everything. And then Darby Allen uh fights fights him off. Uh, he you know Brian Cage and his land on the on the, st- the steps. Darby Allen goes for the coffin drop onto him on the steel steps. Um, but Brian Cage still ends up recovering after that. Um, and then at one point Darby Allen goes to get the um the, the bare hand on Brian Cage on the top rope. While he's being distracted, while the referee is being distracted by a hook, um, and then Ricky Starks gets involved, crutches, um, you know, Darby, uh, Darby Allen. All of a sudden, the lights goes out, and you know what that means. And I, I, know, and I don't mean, <laughs> um, you know, by using that catchphrase of you know, of Brody Lee, uh, of the whole thing. You know what that means. <laughs> um, but uh, the lights went out, and then it came back on, and it sting. He got a baseball bat. He's right behind Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks turns around. And Sting strikes Ricky Starks. And I know people are going to say, Oh, yeah, Sting finally did something. Finally, Sting finally did something. Yeah, I heard it already. And everything, blah, blah, blah. Sting finally did something. Oh, yeah, we'll be. Yeah, uh, yeah what do you want? Freaking metal? So Sting finally did something. Um, you know. Besides just showing up there and and you know, and, and making his presence uh um you know be be uh presented, he actually um missed his baseball bat and hit Ricky Starks. So basically by, by doing that, he buried Ricky Starks. Yep, that's it. Ricky Starks, his career dead, dead in the waters now. He he got buried. <laughs> but in the end, Brian Cage get caught by Darby Allen off the top rope with the crucifix super avalanche crucifix bomb for the pin and gets the win. Winner still the TNT champion. Darby Allen, and that was it. And and what and the show went up there with Team Taz on the stage in uh, disbelief. While it was snowing, Sting and Darby Allen stands tall, like fall like sun. Just saying. <laughs> nah, I just kidding with that. Uh, I, I don't I don't use that terms, but some some people do that too because just because of the comparisons, it's, yo. But anyways, um, and that was it. That was it for the show. And that will that will uh, conclude results of AW Dynamite New Year's Smash 2021 20, more tends to part two. Obviously, the tomorrow the tomorrow wrestling was six matches more than uh, the first night. And my overall score for the show now more tends to um, night one. I give it a nine out of ten. This show, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Actually, I don't remember if I give it an eight and a half out of ten, or an eight out of ten when I did the um, the show with you know, with, with the um, with the asylum, but uh, eight out of ten though, just just for safety. But there you go, folks. And I will do another um you know 
um, yeah, like like I did with the uh, whole Wrestle Kingdom uh, 15 one. I'm gonna do it again with the whole New Year's uh, Smash thing. Um, where I'm gonna do the um, the highlights of the nights and all that and everything. Um, like you know, that's gonna be the, uh, a new way to me do it now, folks. Instead of just doing it like like I did with, you know, with New Japan. So, but anyways, that's basically it, folks. Where it tends to um, everything that has transpired. Where it tends to this all elite wrestling reviews for AW Dark and for AEW Dynamite where it tends to AEW Dynamite New Year Smash 2. And that includes the reviews where it tends to AEW Dark and Dynamite for this all elite wrestling reviews. With that being said, thank you all for watching. If this is the first time experiencing your truly natural born thriller right here on YouTube, please, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for more future contents with your favorites and mines taking out the trash series and that being said you'll stay well stay safe take care of yourself early that's going on in the world wear your mask wear your gloves love one another god bless one another live in peace and harmony for us all so i'm out here tata for now for it's natural born thriller saying peace on the streets <laughs> as i try to do that again once again and yeah, that's basically it. Don't forget to hit the like button or the dislike button to show uh, that you are my motivators by spending your time joining along with me, choosing me as I try to give you the absolute best content with the Orange Cassie Thumbs stuff that I could possibly can. And with, also with that, with that too. <laughs> so, take care.